really out of context. Welcome. I'm Pastor Zeman. And I'm Vicar Doldy. And, and you're, you're watching, watching the, the Pastor Vicar Podcast. Podcast. It's the Pastor Vicar Podcast. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're back. We are. Another week. Yep. Another week, another dollar. Goes quick. Yep. Goes quick. Hard to believe. Yep. And I know a lot of people are watching. That's great. A lot of comments. And yeah. This has been great recently. People have been people have been uh, asking more questions for us and to I've answer. And I've noticed, too, in, in some of the Christmas cards I've been getting, saying, hey, you haven't seen me in church, yeah. but I've been watching the podcast. That's and awesome. Like, wow. Good wonderful. to hear from it. Yeah, I've, I've gotten those, too. So thanks for sending them, and thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah. All right. Should we start with prayer? Yeah. Is that you or me? Well, you go for it because I'll do All right. the book. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Let's pray. Uh, dear Lord, it is a busy time for, for pastors and vicars and secretaries, and we ask that you would continue to bless our church as we prepare for uh, Christmas and all that comes with it. Uh, bless also those who are in their homes today as they watch the podcast. Uh, send your Holy Spirit upon them as they may learn uh, what we're learning as we get into the text. Thank you again, Lord, for this time to be together. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I just I I just realized there's a different book that I want to grab today. I, oh, really? I stacked a book over there, but I remember there's an even bigger book. And that was my goal today for book to picking. B- to biggest, biggest, book. biggest book. But also, here, I'll just go get it and then I'll talk about it a little bit. All right. He, he is going to the other side of the room and there's many books over there. And he found a big book, not a thick book, but a no, it big is. book. It's huge. Look at how big it is compared to Pastor Zeman's head. Whoa. It's huge. And I saw this before, um, and I thought it was really cool. Um, well, I can't remember. I was down here looking for children's books for um, uh, the men's retreat because mm-hmm. we did. We talked about literature and the Word of God and how yeah. the Word of God's great literature. Um, and I saw this, and this is really cool. Because it is the book of Exodus. It's, yeah, thank you for helping me hold this. It's really big. It's, it's a, yeah, I probably won't even need to zoom in too much uh, to show everybody this. I usually have to, but it's a picture book and it's got Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew right next to the words. Um, It's in an interlinear. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And. And it's kind of artistic. The Hebrew words are written into the art, and I think I think it's really cool. It's it's just you know it's the book of Exodus word for word, and so here's Hebrew here's next the to Exodus it. chapter one, mm-hmm. and then that's the Hebrew. Yeah, so right here is the Hebrew, and then it's got the English right next to it, so you can kind of see. And it's it's interesting. This is a great example of um, how Hebrew works. So English reads right to left, and we usually have. Um, a solid line of text here, but then towards the end, you know, it's kind of, it, the lines are a little bit different length. Well, Hebrew reads from right to left instead of left to right, and so you see the opposite kind of going on. They sort of mirror each other in this picture, which is really cool. So sometime if you're down here, come come check out this book. It's, it's really awesome. Yeah. Well, this will definitely be... Uh, be a good slammer that's yeah, for sure we'll get our <laughs> okay might create a break breeze and blow everything away <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's, let, maybe that'll be our goal is make the papers go flying just a little bit okay all right ready <laughs> okay. three two, two one. one. Oh, oh, that was so loud that was very loud that's right the up. best slam we've had yeah, since we started i think so i think i think you're right about that yeah Nice, nice book there. I didn't even know that was here. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of it. I mm-hmm. think it's really neat. Yep. So what are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to, I think we should talk about the, uh, I mean, the Wednesday. I think we should talk a little oh, bit yeah. about Wednesday mm-hmm. and then going into Sunday because they are mm-hmm. related. They all both come from the series we've been using yes. this year. Mm-hmm. So. We'll have to go there, but I think you have some questions first, though, right? Yes, we yes we'll do those. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, so, this question uh, was again from someone that's been watching pretty faithfully. Mm-hmm. Um, the question is, what is the seminary experience like 
for the pastor's wives. Interesting. Yeah, kind of a follow-up to yeah. last week's question on what is seminary yeah. like. Yeah, and I, I thought it was very positive for our family. Yeah. Yeah, we we uh, were very fortunate. We were living, uh, we rented a, a, a old farmhouse. Cool. Uh, outside the seminary, about mm-hmm. mm, 10, 10 miles or so. Okay. We are out in the country, total country. That's awesome. Yeah, beautiful pond with lots of fish. If you didn't catch a bass in the first five casts, it was a bad day. Oh, wow. <laughs> it, was, it was great. And our landlords were an older couple in their 80s, maybe. Oh, wow. Uh, they became like our grandparents. Like Cool. They were wonderful wow. people. And hmm. so uh, that set it up real well for our family. Uh, the biggest question I think wives have to deal with is what they should do to support. Uh, and it's financially and oh, that's, a, that's a big question yeah. financially. And mm-hmm. so uh, I know right. Deb, Deb did uh, work at the daycare, but then she was kind of frustrated by that because mm. she really wanted to be home with the kids. Oh, sure. And so it, it was, it was kind of making it hard on our kids and our family. So she pulled out of that. Um, and then stayed home yeah. and supported that way. Mm-hmm. So fortunately, we had enough income from the sale of our house to make it through. Oh, nice. Yeah, so she didn't have to go to work. But that a lot of the wives will take on a job. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so it depends on, you know, what what your wife is doing. If they're mm-hmm. a teacher, they'll try to find a teaching job. Sure. Mm-hmm. I, when I was teaching in Fort Wayne, I, we, we did have a, a number of seminarians and their mm-hmm. wives who were plugged into the church. Right. And mm-hmm. were taking on jobs. Yeah. We'd have them for a couple of years, and then they'd mm-hmm. go. Right. Mm-hmm. So you get a lot of that. But uh, the seminary is really good for families and wives. We There was a co-op, a clothing mm-hmm. co-op, which it's like going to Goodwill, except you don't pay anything. <laughs> right. You go look through the stuff. You find something you like, take it out, free yep. of charge. Mm-hmm. It was it was pretty cool. Yeah, I was always there checking out the cler- clericals. Yes, and I found I still wear a couple from there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> They're looking kind of ratty, but <laughs> yeah, one's yeah. really faded. It's become my. It was supposed to be gray, but now it's looking more like white. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. So and then uh, there's a, uh, cl- a food co-op as well. Yes. Every week you get so many points, and then you can just go in there and use your points. Yep. Like dollars, mm-hmm. at least that's what it was yeah. for us. And it's based on how many people you have in your family. Uh, it depends on how many points you get then. Mm-hmm. And so you go in. So there's not prices on the, the items. There's like this is a one-point item. This is a two-point item, a three-point mm-hmm. item. And you, you, you spend that. Mm-hmm. So that also helps. Yeah. So probably the biggest thing the wives have to deal with then is the finances and then uh, trying to take care of your family. And if they have a, a, a vocation, a job, then they would also be looking at that. Yeah. But I, I, I was a very positive experience for us. We were there for two years, and uh, it was a great blessing. It will definitely be different for you yes. coming back right. with a wife and a, and a kid. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I, Emma and I got married this past summer, so she hasn't been at seminary yet. So I, I can't really answer that question yeah. totally. I mean, I, I've seen it secondhand from... Uh, uh, from my brother, now brother-in-law, um, and his wife, and they have um, it's called SWA. I don't know if they had that when you were, mm-hmm. but Seminary Wives Association, I believe, is I what it is. I think they did have something like that, but okay. I never heard of SWA though. Okay, yeah, maybe they call. That's it. what they call it. They call it SWA. So okay. <laughs> there's SWA events that are specifically for um, uh, the seminary wives uh, to get together and. And they, they have professors come, and they do theological talks and, and all that. It's pretty Yeah, great. those are all available depending on what you yeah. want to do. I know also for uh, uh, families that have kids, um, they do a little library reading time um, mm-hmm. in the morning sometimes. I don't know if it's every day, but um, I just remember uh, my brother-in-law's kids coming to chapel from – the reading time yeah yeah there, there's opportunities for the wives to join up like chapel yep. every day in chapel mm-hmm. which is a great thing if you can mm-hmm. do that yeah it depends on you know if you're on campus it makes it a little easier mm-hmm. 
Sure. Which so. you, there's no married housing option on campus. So. No, not at Fort Wayne. Right. But I think there is at St. Louis. Yes, that's right. That's yes, right. there is. Yeah. But that's the other school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> neither of us went there, so <laughs> we can't really speak to that one. Yeah. And we're supposed to have some sort of rivalry with them, but yeah. ah, whatever. I don't. I don't care about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the next question was... Oh, I, I always want to follow up on that oh. house we lived in. Yeah. Oh, Guess I, what happened? That's I was going to ask you, because I remember you, you told me a story. Yeah. I don't remember how it ended, though. So. Well, they had all this land. They mm-hmm. had this pond and a pro- at least 40 acres. Wow. And, uh, well, they hit it big. They made they probably made over a million dollars. Oh, I believe that. Uh, they oh, sold it all easy. off. Yeah. Uh, that was after we left. Uh, there was one more family that rented that place, and then, okay. uh, then I found out that it was sold off and the last the, when i went and visited over there it was unbelievable all that land is is uh, there's a there's a house every square inch it seems like what yes it's a complete subdivision there's wow. no trees there's n- oh, the man. pond has a um a fence around it because they don't want people to drown so oh. that's oh. off limit yeah so because it's in the neighborhood now and so they don't want anybody yeah. going over there right right so it it was shocking. Wow. I'm so hmm. glad I didn't see that happen. I would have been just, I mean, oh. yeah. unfortunately, they didn't get to use their money very, very much uh, because one of the landlords passed away. Oh, okay. Yep. And the other one was also very sick. So okay. it's amazing how something like can change just like that. Yeah, right. But I was shocked to see yeah. roads and houses and, wow. oh, man, but they sold That's it all. Crazy. That was the, They were thinking about that, and they held off as long as they could. Yeah, I mean, they gave us wagon rides, and oh, it was wonderful. Cool. And it that's prepared so me for being out in the country. Yeah. That's where we ended up, out in the country. Nice. So nice. God had a plan. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Mm-hmm. Had you lived in the country really before that? or We lived in a subdivision out in the country. Okay. Which is pretty was pretty close to okay. being out in the country. Yeah. I mean, we, as boys, we would go all the way, all, all through the woods and mm-hmm. cornfields and things yeah. like that. So we were, we were used to that. But nice. It was a great situation. So, yeah, that's – and they also have a big pond at uh, Seminary, too. They do, yeah. With fish. Yes. But not – You can't fish. You're not supposed to, at least. Well, my buddy does. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, he must get permission, I guess. For well, yeah, yeah, there's – yeah. There's, there's a lot of bass. That's fair. In there. Oh, really? Huh. So, yeah. I know there's geese. <laughs> yes, lots of geese. Always geese. I don't know if I told you this, but I did jump in that pond. Really? I did, yes. Did you get eaten by all bluegills? No, I didn't. There's massive bluegills in there because <laughs> people feed them, and they're, like, bubbling on the surface. They remind me of piranhas. Wow. Yeah. Nice. So why did you jump in? Did something throw you in? No. I uh, I was leaving for the summer. I, I was uh, going to work at Camp Luissimo, and so I was like, well, this will be my goodbye. <laughs> so I jumped in the lake. Oh, my. <laughs> Oh, if I would have known that, we probably would have told him to eliminate him off the list. Get, you know? get a different guy. Yeah. <laughs> Give us a different pick. <laughs> well, he's getting he's getting ready for Camp Luisimo. That's right, yeah. Jumping that way. Yeah, polar bearing or whatever yeah. they want to call it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's cut, cutting edge, huh? jumping in that pond. Yeah. Well, I kind of thought that, you know, maybe it could start a tradition of once you're done, you, you don't jump ring, in. You don't ring the bell? You jump well, in. I mean, ring the bell, yeah, sure, but yeah. jump in. Okay. Yeah. We'll see. I don't think it'll take off. Um, Probably not. I don't, I don't know if many guys They did drain that, that pond completely. Did really? you hear about that? No. When when they do that? Uh they, they were when they were doing the construction of the new library, they had to drain oh, the entire Oh, sure. Pond. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. And then they filled it back up. Okay. Wow. That's I, Where do you Where's all that water go? Uh they just stored it somewhere in like really? trucks or something. Huh. And I imagine the fish, too, because it didn't seem like it affected the fish. Oh, okay. All right. I wow. That's wild. Yeah. That's a lot of water. I mean, it is a lot of water, yeah. that's for sure. Wow. Hey, there's another question I noticed yes. here, huh? Someone asked, uh, left a comment on the video, which was great. Um, you can do that anytime you want. Um, just ask a question on the video. And um, this was this was the one. Um, for it Specifically for me, uh, what, what are my biggest hopes and fears in becoming a Christian parent, wow, that's a isn't that a good question? Wow, that's, yeah, man. Well, I guess maybe I should start with fears because end on a high note, right? Okay. Um, 
fears. I I think of um, where where it says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he mm-hmm. won't depart from that. And I, I just hope I do that well, that I train up our kids in the way that we do together um, in the way they should go, um, teaching them the faith well. And um, we, something we did uh, recently was we wrote down kind of a 18 year plan. <laughs> of, oh my. Well, of, of like things that we, things that we want to hit each year of, of the kids life. And um, it, well, really it's 19 years cause it starts at conception. <laughs> we actually, now the, now the goal is like witnessing, like teaching our kid the basic truth about uh, Jesus and it might sound kind of funky to say but we we believe that life begins at conception I I call my kid uh, my son when I'm talking about him and in confirmation we 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 called him uh, our son and um, and so he's you know he's a person and he's he's our kid and and God has given him as a gift to us and and so um, and we also believe that Faith comes through hearing, and that even now we know our kid can hear us, and and uh, so we um, we've made that our goal until he's born to to continue to to witness to him um, in different ways and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, the I guess just the that's the biggest fear I think is is failing in that in that um, department um, because ultimately. Nothing else really matters, uh, eternally speaking, um, and so and and I and I think we can we can be confident uh, as parents. I guess it's weird to count myself in that qu- category now, but I guess technically I'd fall into it. Um, but but to think that uh, um, I, I think I think we can we can look at um, kids that have that were raised in Christian homes and they, they don't believe or, or they, they've, they've walked away from the church and, and get, get nervous about that and, and think, oh man, like what, what is God doing? Or, or, you know, is that kid totally lost forever? But I think, I think we can be pretty confident in that promise that comes from, it's from Proverbs, that verse that I'm Mm -hmm. quoting over and over again, the train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he, he won't depart from it. Mm-hmm. Um, I consider that a promise. Um, yeah, I and, agree. And uh, so I think if if you have a kid that um, has wandered, um, uh, take confidence in, in that promise that um, uh, when when they're old, <laughs> even if you don't see it, um, that they won't depart from from that eternal, everlasting truth. Some hopes, though, on the other hand, um, boy. Uh, I don't know. I guess I, I'm just excited to uh, see what what our kids are going to be like. I mean, we got a boy coming, and so what he's what he's going to uh, enjoy doing, just be naturally good at, you know, stuff like that. Will he will he be musical or athletic or or um, take a take a deep interest in theology, you know, all, all that sort of stuff um, is is pretty pretty exciting because it's kind of a mystery at this point <laughs> it's a clean slate yeah no idea um so yeah i don't know i i certainly hope that um he he's uh interested in in church things not necessarily that he wants to become a pastor but it, that'd be cool if he did but uh yeah i think the biggest thing on that uh is if if uh you're your son would see you enjoying being the pastor right. and mm-hmm. he would have a daddy and, mm-hmm. and not see you burdened down and, you know, church having troubles with conflict. Right. And if he sees all those negative things, there's no way he's going to be sure. a pastor. And that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of it has to do with gifts too. That's in God's calling. And yeah. Right. You just never know. Right. So yeah. what, yeah, whatever he, he ends up being really good at or. And might up end up being a teacher. 
There's yeah. a lot of teachers in your family. There are a lot of teachers in my family, so mm-hmm. that's definitely possible. So. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good with those questions. I yeah, think we covered I'm, that. Don't I'm want to spend the entire time talking yeah, about <laughs> ourselves. You know. Uh, it's, <laughs> sure. It's a. It helps. It's a little nice little thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we do have quite a text here. Actually, we have a c- couple of them. Uh, maybe you don't realize the. Um, I don't know if we mentioned it in the podcast, but this year for Advent, we're using a series that we actually purchased. What that means is uh, the series comes with a number of resources, including complete bulletins, uh, all the scripts and Bible readings and all that. It also includes children's messages and sermons, Mm -hmm. which we called canned sermons because Mm -hmm. they're not ours. They're written by somebody else. And actually, we, we know the pastor who wrote these. Yep. Um, in fact, I even ran with him. Uh, oh, you worked, have worked out, okay. worked out with him uh, mm-hmm. when he. Yep. And uh, so we we knew him personally, so we thought that th- the theme was decent. And I mm-hmm. went ahead and purchased it. And so uh, the the struggle we have though is anytime you have a canned sermon, yeah, it's not your voice and right. it's not necessarily your style. Right. So we didn't take the sermons and just read them. Right. And <laughs> what we did is made them our own mm-hmm. and so the reason i bring this up is because uh this is now the third week mm-hmm. is wednesday you'll be preaching again yep and then since we don't have a fourth wednesday this year we, I, I just i made that decision because if we had a, a wednesday oh, advent yeah, that'd be brutal. we would have had wednesday service christmas eve on thursday christmas day on friday saturday night and sunday so we weren't sure if if people would come <laughs> Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, 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 five days, days in, in a row. row. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, us, us, past my, you know, picker and pastor, we might be able to divide it up a little bit, but um, yeah. I thought, well, let's give it a rest. So, <laughs> in order to use that, uh, re- the the fourth Advent series, we move that into Sunday. Right. So you're doing that. Yes. So so we're gonna kind of look, cover each of those in a broad way today, not mm-hmm. the heavy duty, by heavy, heavy duty Bible study, because the struggle that we have every week is tr- try to take what it is that Can Sermon talked about mm-hmm. and then cr- try to incorporate it into some kind of uh, working manuscript that we could preach. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, r- let's review here. The first week, the focus was on Mary mm-hmm. and uh, I'm still stuck on that hymn uh, oh, yeah. from... from <laughs> Heaven, uh, uh, the angel Gabriel. The angel from Gab- came. Gabriel from heaven came. Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, there actually is some beautiful versions on YouTube, and our very own vicar here. He he also composed his own uh, rendition of that. So that that week is stuck in my mind just because yeah. of that one right. hymn. Yeah, and you brought in the pondering of Mary. I believe that was. Yep. And then mm-hmm. l- last week we had another focus and. It's John the Baptist. John the Baptist, yeah. which is rather interesting because John comes up again. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, so John the Baptist was last week. Mm-hmm. And now this week. Da 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 da. Drum roll, please. Uh, the emphasis is a little bit on Elizabeth. Um, yeah. But more than that, the work of the Holy Spirit through Elizabeth. Right. And but that's what the series yeah. does kind of focuses on one person and right. how the mm-hmm. Lord worked in that one yeah. person. Mm hmm. We weren't going to go worship Mary. We right. weren't going to worship John the Baptist. In right. fact, he didn't want that to happen. No, he said, don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm not worthy to untie those sandals of the one that's coming yeah. after me. Right, know? right. Yeah. And here we have Elizabeth, who was hardly qualified right. to be one that we worship. Uh, mm-hmm. And then uh, coming up this weekend, John the Baptist comes up again. Yeah. So, uh, Elizabeth. Yeah. If so, she were in our congregation... What would she be doing? Where would, what would she be doing? Yeah, w- w- would she what? Would she be going women, women of the word? You think? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Probably would. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. How, what do you think her age was about? She was fairly old. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't say exactly. 
So I I hate to even give a guess, but they, I would guess over fifty. Zechariah did call themselves old. Yes. Oh yeah. Um. So and I Luke would. Does, I think you're being very generous too. on that. I, th- I would think they're well past age bearing years. Oh sure. Yeah. I'm thinking seventies, eighties, nineties. You know. I'm well, thinking I, was, I was figuring that, but you know, people. Could be. I don't know if they lived quite as long. Yeah. In that. Just day. based on what Zechariah sure. he, he described themselves as old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, like. That was one of the issues, right? Mm-hmm. They were old without children. Mm-hmm. And the word would be barren. Mm-hmm. And another one of those, we seem to run into people like that a lot in the Bible. The, um, we've had other characters who were barren, mm-hmm. and then God did a miracle. Mm-hmm. Biggest one, Sarah. Mm-hmm. You know, who would have thought? And what was her age? 90, 91, whatever it was? Yeah, she was And Abraham was, Abram was 100. Yep. So mm-hmm. it's crazy. God can do anything he wants. He sure can. And he does use old, old people. Right, right, yes. The wise ones. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you might find, if you if she were come to our church, she, she would be retired, right. probably, mm-hmm. if, she, if she even has a job. Because, mm-hmm. um, what's her, tell, tell me about her husband. Well, her husband was, um, I think he was a high priest. Um yeah, at least he was. Well, not, I don't know if well, he was no, a high priest. It's just a temple priest, wasn't he? High priest would be yeah, An- Annas Ananias and, or, and Caiaphas. Or Annas, yes. Not Annas, Annas and Caiaphas, yeah. those were the high priests. But yes. I think he was just a temple priest. Okay. Yeah. Not just. But he, but. but he was assigned to – that. the reason why I thought that is because I think he went in somewhere special in the temple to burn incense. Yes. And yes. that's where he saw Gabriel. Gabriel. Came that's why I, I just said yeah. temple priest. I don't, I don't know if sure. there was a certain class. But. Right. Yeah. So yeah. So she would have our her identity through him. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really how much it what that's what it was done back then. Mm-hmm. Okay. So maybe uh, Zechariah would be on the council, maybe or on the elders. Sure. Maybe assisting. Yeah. In worship. Oh yeah. Definitely part yeah. of that. Mm-hmm. But maybe more like an elder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. We have Elizabeth, and we're kind of lifting her up a little bit here, but we're, I, I know we've been having a lot of discussion on this sermon, as we always do, yeah. and trying to keep the focus more on the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. right, which was working through Elizabeth. Yes. Mm-hmm. So look for that on Wednesday. See, see how you can see how God can use even the oldest among us and those who, in this case, well, she was barren. And that comes with it many, many things. So, so anything else you want to say about that sermon? You ready to go? I think it's yeah, a good service. I'll, I'll practice it a couple more times. And mm-hmm. yeah, I think it was a forecast some some snow on Wednesday. Oh yeah. Yep. Hmm. We're doing this earlier in the week. If you can't tell, <laughs> so uh, yeah. we'll see what happens. Yeah. But w- we've got a not a huge crowd, but. For, for Wednesday, oh, I think we're yeah, doing okay. Good, think, yeah, during yeah. these COVID mm-hmm. times. Yep. Yeah. And by the way, if you are a little afraid, those Wednesday services are good ones to go to because they're, you know, we're not wall to wall people. Right. So mm-hmm. you wouldn't have to sit close to anybody. Right. Yeah. You, you could, could be 10 feet spot. away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking for the church, church experience, maybe put up Wednesday on your list. We have one more to go. Yeah. And if you listen to it before Wednesday, it might be right, kind of tight. Yeah. Today. <laughs> yeah. Try to get it edited tonight. Yet, yeah, we'll, we'll see, see what happens. We'll see. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of people, as soon as you put it out there, they listen to it. Yeah, true. Yeah. And Pastor Riley has been really good about sending it to with the, um, what's that called? Constant Contact. Constant Contact. Yeah. Yep. And that, that's when a lot of people start to watch it, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, well, if you miss Wednesday, then you can, uh, it, it will be online. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now let's go to Sunday, and you can see we didn't want to waste our money here and just yeah. throw out the fourth week right. Advent. Mm-hmm. So we replace the normal readings of Sunday. Remember, there's a lectionary series that we have that we follow, but this Sunday we throw that out, and we use the readings that the series came up with. Okay, so that means we're going to be in Luke chapter three. And Deuteronomy 32 for for two of the readings, and also Psalm 145. I forget what the epistle. I didn't write that down, but uh, 
So we're using those readings and actually use the suggestions of the uh, series writer of the hymns and everything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you don't like the hymns, don't blame us. Blame the series writer. There you go. And that's where the Mary song came from. Yeah. Probably wouldn't have picked that one because right. we don't know it very well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the big problem we have here is is about John the Baptist again. Right. I think people are getting sick of hearing about John the Baptist, maybe. I think this might be the third time that this come up. I thought it came up in a um, Sunday, too. I kind of thought so, too, but... Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember which week that was. And it's very appropriate that John the Baptist is coming up because he was the one who prepared the way. Right. Mm -hmm. For the first advent. Right. Yeah. Well, let's, I think it might be a good idea just to read that reading. It's from Luke chapter 3, okay. 1 to 16. Uh, we'll read all of it, but I think when I'm writing the sermon here, I'm going to be focusing more on the first six verses Okay. Uh, because this is too much. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's some mention of it, but we'll, we'll see. Um, the, the Bible study time itself will look at most of the text. Okay. But I don't want to turn this into a John the Baptist Bible study. Right. Yeah. So, let's read it. Uh, you did not... I didn't get you another sheet. Sorry about that. That's okay. We'll just share. We'll share? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, would you like to start? <laughs> sure. I can do that. All right. Here we go. Uh, we'll just alternate verses. Yeah, here. that sounds good. Okay. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod, being tetrarch of Galilee and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of it- Itureia, <laughs> and, <laughs> wow, there we go, that's a big one, and Trachon- Trachonitis, and, <laughs> you're, that's mean of you, <laughs> Lysanias, <laughs> tetrarch of Abilene. Yeah, I set him up. I, I knew that was coming. I wanted to see how he did. <laughs> I got all the way to Itureia. Yeah, th- those are tough names. Uh, we'll look at the lectionary book that we have up there and yeah, see how they're pronounced. Yeah, tells you how to pronounce but, uh, it. Yeah, that w- <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, That's brutal. I, I have a hard time pronouncing things, uh, so I thought, well, let's see how, how Vicar <laughs> does on this. <laughs> you were giggling over there like I a was. Kid. I knew it was oh, coming. <laughs> I knew it was coming. And our listeners would get a kick out of that, oh, too. Oh, I believe, yeah. Yeah, totally set up, and you just fell right for it. <laughs> oh, sure, I'll oh, do yeah. it. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, s- since we kind of stumble a little bit on that, uh, all these names, like, well, what in the world? Why do we talk? Well, right. It just puts a context of it, um, mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, it's We have Tiberius Caesar, which which is a Roman mm-hmm. uh, uh, emperor, mm-hmm. and Pontius Pilate, which is extension of, of the Roman Empire, being the governor, so of Judea. So you have, the, so they're all attached to really the Rome. Mm-hmm. And then you have the Tetrarchs. Now, I learned something about the Tetrarchs. Tetrarch means ruler of one quarter. Mm-hmm. Didn't really realize that. I had forgotten. Um, basically, uh, Herod the I was the main guy, and then when, then he passed on his reign to divided up by four. Mm-hmm. And I think we oh, do okay. have the four guys here. Uh, we have Herod, Philip, and Trachoninus, Chak- and Lysias. So, yeah, all four of them there, sure enough. Yeah. So the one that we're really familiar with would be Herod. Right. Mm-hmm. Herod Antipas, basically. Yeah. That's his name. Um, so this puts the context of it. Uh, this, this is the Herod we're familiar with in the Christmas story. Yeah. So they're tetrarchs again. Uh, all all have uh, a tie to the Roman governor, the, to the Roman uh, yeah, they're ruling kind of like puppets, right? They, of Rome. Very much for so. For the Jews. Yep. Okay. Yep. So then verse 2, we have uh, the religious setting. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. So now we have those two characters. And you might remember Caiaphas, which was uh, very much involved with uh, Jesus and Mm -hmm. the crucifixion. Yes. Uh, The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness or in the desert. In the bleak land that it was there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, this is, again, tracing Zechariah and what we've already learned in uh, Luke chapter 1 
when we hear the whole story about how that happened. So now we have a time and place. This is historical. This really happened. These are real people. This is not made up. That's yeah. what I like when you have real people. You can mm -hmm. actually look these people up, and you know they existed. Mm -hmm. So this is very historical. Yeah. Okay, let's go to verse 3. Okay. And he went into all the region and all the... Oh, sorry. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Okay, so he's, he's preaching, and, and the key is repentance. It's mm -hmm. a big thing. Why would he be doing that? Well, we'll get at that soon here. Um, now, there's some also historical part because this was also prophesied. Mm -hmm. And verse 4, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall become straight and the rough places shall become level ways. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Okay, stop there. All right, you can see the purpose then for, for John was to da, 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 prepare, prepare the, way. the mm -hmm. way of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's what our series is all about. Prepare ye is the subject, you know, the theme, prepare mm -hmm. ye. And so we are prepared through Mary, through all these other characters, and John here. Uh, so that prepare ye is carried out through Christmas as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to hear that at Christmas Eve and Christmas uh, Day. We're using a series there, too. Mm -hmm. This little different yeah. emphasis being Christmas. Uh, I thought it was interesting, it's interesting that these words came from Isaiah. So way back mm -hmm. then, God was already... Uh, getting ready. Mm -hmm. God had, had getting ready for Jesus. And so here you have John out there. Um, the the rest of that is basically some, some of the exploits of John, how people were coming out to see him and, um, and some of the things he was saying. So uh, I think we'll just stop for th there for a bit. Uh, the text, the theme of this week is really focusing on the one word, and that's proclaiming. Mm -hmm. Proclaiming. And I'm kind of highlighting around the words here. Um, it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Now, this is not, I'm so sad. Right. No, no, no. This is one that's proclaiming. Mm -hmm. So this proclaiming idea is the key. I think that's even the word on our bulletin. If we, no, if we use if we use the can bulletin, it would say proclaim on it. But we're, we got a special bulletin. Ooh, okay. Yes. Nice. Yes, Jerry came up with a special bulletin with this. Cool. So, yep. Uh, <coughs> let's look at Psalm 145. This also was suggested, and I think it fits in very well with this whole theme. Would you mind reading the entire thing? Or okay, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. What did you just say? I said forever and ever. Before that. Forever and ever. Before that. Extol, right? Oh. Yeah, what's that mean? I, I praise you and extol? I think. Oh, um like raise up or sure yeah i i think it's very pro, pro, proclaiming like yes that. right mm -hmm. okay keep going Sorry. okay <laughs> i thought you meant because i did say forever and ever twice yeah you did <laughs> so i was like yeah that <laughs> comes up twice <laughs> okay. um, great is the lord and most worthy of praise his greatness no one can fathom mm -hmm. one generation will commend your works to another they will tell of your mighty acts well look at that another telling they will tell of his yeah. own. Okay, so we have extolling, we have telling, yeah. and this is from generation to generation. Yeah, which you talked like about. I was going to say, yep. if you didn't, what, like us telling our kids, you know. That's exactly yeah. what mm -hmm. a Christian parent should do. Mm -hmm. Yep, go ahead. Okay. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. Who will speak? They, the, the children. Well, that's the hope, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, more speaking, so more proclaiming. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. Yep. Um, 
and I will meditate on your wonderful works. Mm -hmm. They will tell of the power of your mm -hmm. awesome works. There it is again. And I will proclaim your great deeds. Beautiful. Yeah. There you go. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. So you can see why the author picked that one. Yeah, uh, that's one, great. Psalm 145, 1 to 7. Just stop there on that. But a lot of proclaiming there. And I almost would was going to base the sermon on that text alone. Okay. I mean, it could have. Sure. Um, but it, yeah. it, it, it still is being fulfilled here in the rest of the text it's mm -hmm. it's all about the proclaiming uh yes. the gospel is talking about the cry which is another way of saying yeah. proclaiming in the Shout desert yeah. yep um i also like to read uh the old testament reading and let's see if how that might fit in okay uh, deuteronomy 32 deuteronomy 32 2 to 4 may my teaching drop as the rain oh, i just love that my speech distill as the dew, like gentle rain upon the tender grass, like showers upon the herb. Isn't that a great image? That's beautiful. For I will da, 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 proclaim, there it is, the name <laughs> of the Lord. Ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. Now, a couple things came out in those two texts, and that is greatness, the greatness of God, the rock, his work is perfect, great is the Lord, most, wor most, most worthy of praise, his greatness no one can fathom, so we have this greatness, and I believe that's coming out in, with John as well, and let's see here, let's get to the, the end of the text in Luke, and we can see the greatness coming out. Uh, let's see. Verse 15. If you could read 15 and 16 of Luke 3. Okay. See if we can get the greatness coming out. As the people were in expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Where's the greatness in there? Jesus and his coming. Yep. Yeah. I'm not worthy to untie even yeah. his sandals. I mean, right. this is how. Yeah. Who is coming is far greater. So it fits mm -hmm. this great theme and proclaimed theme. So this is where all these texts kind of go together. Uh, I thought the connection was beautiful. And... It was all by design. This is not from the lectionary. This is actually from a pastor who put all these readings together and grouped them. Probably the only thing that might be a little more lectionary-like is Luke chapter 3. Because mm -hmm. John is heard a lot during Advent time. So, yeah. Okay. So how do you preach that? By the way, how, what are we doing on time here today? Well, I think we've gone at least half an hour. Let's see. 43 minutes in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're good then. We're, we're doing good. Uh, how do you preach this? What do you think? What do I think? Boy. What's jumping out at you? I mean, there's all, I mean, we got some themes here, proclaiming and yeah. greatness. Mm -hmm. and well, I, I use some of this in my John the Baptist sermon, yep. which I know yeah, probably wasn't great for you. But um, I, what I talked about was the um, preaching of, repentance for the forgiveness of sins mm -hmm. how that um uh is is law and gospel um where uh repentance is realizing how sinful we are um, and that's what john did he he revealed to the people the ways that they were not prepared for uh the coming of the christ mm -hmm. um <clears throat> but then it's uh gospel because um, forgiveness of sins um, what comes um, right after that and that's that is through Jesus who is coming too and and in a way um, Jesus prepares you for his own coming by forgiving your sins mm -hmm. yeah dying on the cross and that's that's the hard thing that's that could be this sermon right yeah. here. <laughs> right. You just, just take your sermon and re-preach re it. Pastor Zeman's sermon 
version of my sermon from and, and you know and, and all these weeks we've been running into that a lot i yeah. mean you mm-hmm. mentioned uh, the sermon before and mm-hmm. your last wednesday and now you mentioned i think you're going to mention pastor riley uh so they all kind of fit yeah. together and that's well and, and there's john the baptist is yeah. in the text for this coming wednesday sermon yeah he leaps in elizabeth's womb so you can right. talk about that too and yep but yeah they're, yeah, they're, they're, the connections mm-hmm. are beautiful. And that's yeah. actually good mm-hmm. when all these yeah. things connect. Right. Especially even yes. if you've been going to every church service, they all kind of yeah. connect and make mm-hmm. a uh, really good impact on you. Yeah. Um, I, I was looking at this wilderness, and I, you know, I preached on this a while back, you know, uh, about this, ha- this world being a wilderness. It was right after Deb's death. And, yeah. uh, you know, how, how, how can we find you know, joy in the wilderness here. Uh, but here we have a wilderness of, of such. Uh, we have foreigners who mm-hmm. are ruling, okay, the Romans. Yes. Okay, if you're living during this time, think about it. You're living during this time. We, we, you're basically, uh, the Romans are in charge. Mm-hmm. Be like here, we're living in the United States and, uh, I don't know, Chinese are in charge. Or, <laughs> right. Or, yeah. or the... Or someone else, you know, someone sure. else. The Russians are in charge. Yeah. Although some people might claim that. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, and, and so then they they send their own leaders to rule over us. Right. I mean, I, I don't think we'd like that. No. No. Uh, some, depending on your political persuasion, if you're Republican and the Democrats are ruling, you would feel like maybe the same way, right. or vice versa, mm-hmm. if you're. A Democrat and the Republicans are ruling. You might feel like right. this is mm-hmm. a wilderness. This is horrible, and I know people are feeling that right now. Uh, depending on what side you're on, mm-hmm. it for 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 these four years, the, the Democratic side was like, "Oh, we can't make it through," mm-hmm. and then now it's kind of switched around. And so uh, I think it's very similar here mm-hmm. as far as the wilderness idea, politically speaking. Yeah. And then we have these uh, tetrarchs. Uh, they're kind of scoundrels. Um, yeah. They're Herod, all bad boys. you remember anything about Herod? He killed all those babies. Yeah. Those two year olds and younger. He also had a uh, adultery issue. Mm-hmm. Ends up marrying uh, the his wife of his sister, of his brother. Yeah. No, his brother's wife. Bro- bro- yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And John the Baptist called Calls him, him out on it. it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So what's John, puts him in prison? Uh, yeah. Puts John in prison. Uh, yep. Herod mm-hmm. does. Yep, and then eventually uh, his, he's beheaded. Mm-hmm. So what a scoundrel that guy is. Yeah, he's a bad boy. So you, you really got, uh, if, if you're looking at tough times politically in you know, your country, you, we got nothing. Right. I mean, this, is, yeah. this would be not a good time. What's no. it be a, like a wilderness time? Yeah. And then you have the, uh, the priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. That's not so great either. I mean, these guys were bent on the rules. Uh, on following all these traditions of men and all these mm-hmm. different things, uh, definitely not gospel-oriented kind of church going on here. Right. Very regulated, very legal, legal, legal legalistic, mm-hmm. uh, certainly wilderness-like as well. Yeah. And I, I think I've got to mention that in the sermon, at least right now I'm thinking. And I, I think it's very much like today, too. I mean, are we kind of live in a wilderness reli- uh, with with our faith these, these mm-hmm. days. Uh, what a... What a barren land we live in, mm-hmm. how people have just given up God. Mm-hmm. You know, it's terrible. It's terrible. The things that are going on in our country are just upsetting, aren't they? Yeah. I feel they are. So, we, you know, the times are very much uh, the same. Um, so if Jesus would enter the scene here, what might we have to do? Might have to make some changes. Mm-hmm. And so there's a cry that goes out in the wilderness. Now, this cry is not a cry of change for government. Right. No, it, it's not, not the, gonna get rid of the Romans. Nope. This is not what John came to do, Mm-mm. to get rid of the Romans. Also, the cry is not to get rid of Annas and, and Caiaphas. And, right. No, he, he, his cry is a little more lasting of a change. His cry is, as you mentioned before, of repentance and pointing to the one who can do this. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, I think this is a pretty important message because 
I think uh, Christians today might be focusing a, a little too much on politics about their, how they want maybe they want the pandemic to end. Mm-hmm. I, I, certainly, these are all prayers that we might have. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. We, we want these things to end, but this is mm-hmm. not the lasting thing that's going to make a right. difference. Mm-hmm. Even if we had the perfect government and mm-hmm. no pandemic. Yeah. But if we have not Christ, we have nothing. Right. So this cry is not to end foreign occupation or to make right and purify the church. Yeah. This cry is something that really is aimed straight at the heart. And I think that's a pretty significant thing right there. The cry is aimed at the heart. And uh, what, what do you suppose... Um, that's all about when I say that the cry is aimed at the heart. What do you? What would you think? What are you thinking when I say that? I, I'm thinking maybe. Are you talking about um, the like the heart of the the issue that people's real problem, or maybe their own actual? How about, hearts? How about their own heart? What yeah. what what's the issue? Um, not ha- having forgotten or don't not believing that. Um, God was going to send a savior. All right, and then there, there were some that missed that. Mm-hmm. But notice what John's pr- uh, preaching. He's preaching repentance. Mm-hmm. So the issue here is sin, right? That's the thing that needs to be absolved. That's the thing that needs to be corrected, and that needs to be cleaned up. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's preaching, and, and he's preaching this cry. This cry is in the wilderness of repentance. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. See, the paths are not straight right now. The There's valleys and mountains. and uh, er, er, He wants to make this all level and straight and a, a, a highway straight to God. Uh, that's, that's kind of the language he's using. And uh, John and, and God using John knows that the hearts of men were not that at all ready for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's why he sends John. And John's prescription then is is the baptism of repentance. Mm -hmm. So he's working on hearts there. Um, And many of them that were, I mean, if you look at some of the readings here, you brood of vipers who warned you. I mean, Mm -hmm. so these these people weren't good at all. Their their hearts were not ready for this. Mm -hmm. They weren't ready for Jesus at all. So he's there preparing uh, them. It's almost like cleaning up your house, getting it ready for, uh, for company. Mm-hmm. John's out there cleaning house, and it's actually preparing hearts for mm-hmm. Jesus. And it's, it's the work of the Holy Spirit, of course, mm-hmm. uh, that does this. And in a way, uh, if you look at our church service, this happens every time in our church service. Yeah. We How does that happen? Do confession. Yeah. At the beginning of the service. It, without exception, it's right there in the beginning, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So why why would we do that? Well, because... Be John the Baptist. Yeah. We, we preach but, about sin. and. and why then. would we prepare that way? Why, why, we're, we're actually making level. We're actually making straight. We're doing that right away so that our hearts are prepared to... Receive Christ. Receive Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Meet Jesus. And, and what comes next? Jesus in our word, in the word that we hear mm-hmm. read, Jesus in the word we hear preached, and Jesus in the uh, Jesus in the holy sacrament that we mm-hmm. receive. Yeah. So, uh, so in a way, John the Baptist is is active in our church every single Sunday right. and Saturday mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. It's kind of cool when you think of it that way. Mm-hmm. And so we constantly are preparing the way, and again, it's uh, again cleaning our hearts and making th- making them um, cleansed from their sin from the sin. Um, so I, I think that's what John's trying to do here. Um, the only way this is going to happen, though, it, John could have done this for his whole life and you know done it for hundreds of years. But what what has to happen? Uh, faith has to come. In to well, I'm, I just kind of a little more. Jesus has to come. That's what I'm trying to yeah. get. At. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's still got to come, right? Yes. So yeah. if if Jesus does not come, all that is in vain. All that's in vain. Mm-hmm. And Jesus does come. That's the wonderful thing. And John never never got to see the death, but he did He did get to know Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Praise God that he did. Mm-hmm. But uh, 
he he was able to. I mean, when Jesus came to be baptized, you know, he he understood his place. Even there, he was realizing that his heart wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. I mean, how can I baptize you? I mean, mm-hmm. I, who am I? Shouldn't you baptize? Me? Yeah, right, right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he he already he knew his place before God. So Jesus is really the key mm-hmm. on all this. Uh, so, um, if you want to use some application here, I think we're living in a wilderness world. And the cry needs to go out as well today. It's got to be loud and clear. The cry needs to go out for repentance and forgiveness of sins. That has to go out. And I can't think of any better way than to preach Christmas. Hmm. And what's really sad is so many people want us to not celebrate Christmas. Mm-hmm. And I know there's concern about COVID and all that. And, you know, we shouldn't get together and all that. Let's mm-hmm. not go to church. And, um, well, I pray that these things don't silence the message. Mm-hmm. The cry must be heard mm-hmm. today of all times of this time of wilderness. Uh, the cry's got to go out because how many are really prepared for Jesus coming? Mm-hmm. Not just on Christmas. Right. But it's final coming. Yeah. yeah. So it is, a, again, more like what you preached. Uh, it's very similar, mm-hmm. a preparing. But most of preparing is through the proclamation. Now, I noticed a bulletin and a lot of the things, they keep bringing up this here. Um, verse 6, I believe. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. That's really the goal here. Mm-hmm. That's the goal. All f- that all flesh might see the salvation of God. That all flesh might believe. This mm-hmm. sight, I believe, is referring to the faith. That, that all this would, pre- pre- would, would happen. As, as you prepare, as you repent, the faith that comes with it, believing in the Savior that, who's coming, mm-hmm. is the key. Yeah. So, in a way, thinking, and I almost had this as my sermon title, uh, 2020 vision, <laughs> you could use it two way. 2020 vision of 2020 trying to get our sight right, and mm-hmm. 2020 and, t- and 1920, 20. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's really what what he's trying to do here. He's trying to um, help people's vision be 2020, to be focused on the salvation of God, and the way that he did that is through the proclaiming of repentance. It, it's it seems. A little different because again we're we're always focusing on the wrong things I think we're more we're more worried about our our pocketbook our health and all those things those are all vi- all viable things to think mm-hmm. about but here uh, John the Baptist really focuses on the one fo- one needful thing and that is repentance and faith mm-hmm. those two are really key yeah. yes and that's the greatness of God that he would send Jesus mm-hmm. as a savior in the yeah. flesh. Mm-hmm. And that's the Christmas day, by the way, in the flesh. Yes. God in the flesh who came. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful message. So that's kind of where I'm at today as I'm looking at this text, uh, trying to find a way to uh, make it something memorable and that you could remember. But that cry in the wilderness keeps sticking in my head here that I pray that our church is the one making that cry, that our church is loud and clear about the gospel, especially during this time, Mm -hmm. and uh, that whoever comes would hear it and whoever hears it uh, it online, that Mm -hmm. the message would go out Mm -hmm. and we become a beacon of hope Mm -hmm. in this wilderness world. Um, What an opportunity we have right now to do that. Do you see anything else that I might have missed or questions you might have? Because uh, I, I like throwing that stuff out to you when yeah. you're writing your sermon. So here's your chance, sure. fair game, to get me back. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. But, uh, um, again, nothing's written yet as far as the sermon goes, but sure. is there something more that can be brought out? Or is there questions? Um, hopefully our, our, our listeners here will be ready for um okay i'll I'll ask this so Mm -hmm. um i know i know the in those verses that we didn't read Mm -hmm. people are asking what should we do Mm -hmm. um the people ask that um 
But wouldn't we, especially considering, I mean, Lutheran confessions talk about repentance that uh, reveals sin and then leads immediately to faith. Mm-hmm. Um, wouldn't we say that John, that was that was what John was preaching rather than a get your act together sort of uh, like clean up the sin in your life so that you're ready for Jesus? Well, we always talk about faith and then works that follow faith. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So if they're saying, what are we to do? Mm hmm we're already now assuming faith, right? Yes, and that's that's what I was thinking. So yeah. then their works, whether mm-hmm. we to do, would follow. Right. So mm-hmm. when John says do this, mm-hmm. he's not saying do this and you're, you're saved. Right. They're mm-hmm. already saved. They've yes. already been convicted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I believe he's he's just responding in the works that follow faith. Yeah. It's and the third use of the law stuff that going back to has that again. come up. Yeah, that guides us we we don't know what to do on our own the yeah. word of god teaches us and it, it's not wrong uh to talk about this i mean he did say he did say some doing some things you know mm-hmm. what you should do yeah uh, talk about bearing good fruit i mm-hmm. mean that that's in, that's in keeping with repentance the, right but it's the faith first exactly that's yeah. got to be exactly. the key that's that's why it's keeping with repentance that already yes. came right you keep with it with these words right there, there should be that follow through, and you know, mm-hmm. whoever has two tunics is, is mm-hmm. to share with one who has none. So, mm-hmm. you know, th- these are actually things. Mm-hmm. You know, even the tax collectors and collect no more than you are authorized mm-hmm. to do. I mean, he actually gives them things to do, mm-hmm. but we already know they already have faith if they're at this point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, even, even John keeps pointing them back to Christ, but uh, as Lutherans, I don't think it's a bad thing to suggest to people that maybe your lives might be should be a little different yeah not that you're trying to save yourself right Mm -hmm. but that difference comes through faith yes i mean Mm -hmm. if you're raising your child and and all of a sudden they start going way off with their actions you Mm kind of wonder are you you hearing that message and Mm -hmm. i mean you you kind of wonder so Mm -hmm. uh that the the works do need to follow Mm -hmm. And I think maybe John's getting at that here. Yeah. James talks about that in his letter that yeah. there's there it can't be separated. <laughs> the, yeah. Right. The, and I, but I think as as Lutherans we're a little afraid to talk about the yeah. stuff like this. Yeah. So it's like, mm-hmm. Oh, it's all about Christ. I was like, Yes, yes it is. It's mm-hmm. all about faith through Christ yeah. and mm-hmm. he's he saves us. Yeah. And and but that then naturally leads to the works that follow. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, even in, uh, in the text that talks about the salvation as a gift, mm-hmm. and then it talks about us being wor- God's workmanship, created yes. in Christ to do good works, that yes. he's prepared in advance for us, us to do. do. Mm-hmm. See, even those works, God has prepared for us. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't think we need to get worried about saving ourselves. Right. Mm-hmm. But maybe we tone it down enough and don't expect, don't, oh, it's okay, do anything you want. Right. Say you have faith, but you know, live a crazy, wild, sinful life. Who cares? Sure. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do I sin all the more? Do I sin all the more? No, so by no means, right? Increase, yeah, yeah was that Romans, Romans 6? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No. Just listened to that this morning, actually. There you go. <laughs> so it's fresh. Yeah. 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 So it, they, they were cut to the heart, and that led to their baptisms, and that led to their faith and asking what they should do. Yeah. Yes. That's a good response. Yeah, I I think so. It, mm-hmm. Like, now that I like, is there something I can do? You know. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good yeah. question. Thanks. Others. Um, I, are you going? To, this is just kind of fun. Are you going to talk about Vroom and Road in your sermon? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I could. Yeah. I could. Uh, in case you're not familiar with that road, Vroom and Road used to be one that dropped down into a valley over a one-lane bridge, and uh, it was treacherous. Not an easy road to travel on, but no, since they worked on it, they have made level, they have straightened <laughs> it, they've got rid of the hills, and it's turned into a highway and to the neighbor's yes. dismay. Yeah, right. Because yeah. if you don't drive 55 on there, you'll get run off the road. That's I found right. that out. Yeah. I was trying to drive the speed limit. Yeah, I was like, I thought someone was going to slam into me because I wasn't going fast enough. Yeah, that's but, wild. 
Yeah, that I mean that that's a great illustration of of what of uh, uh, Isaiah right. forty year. You know that is I mean drive on that road sometime. Uh, it, it it was not like that. I mean. Yeah. It was very memorable before they did this. I mean, they, it dropped down. You ever see? You've never seen it. No, I don't. Oh, I mean, it, we've gone. I maybe this is we've gone to Indian Point Park. Yeah, but you you but weren't there different. though when it was the no, one lane no, bridge and all that. No. But it it they was. Were our, we were working on it when we it, got. Yeah, here. it was windy and it was those hills and it dropped down in this valley and right now we're the uh, pedestrian bridge, that used to be a a road going across there. And okay. only one lane of traffic could go at a time, so there was oh. a stoplight. Oh. Yeah, so you had to wait. Wow. And then, and then you had to get across before the stoplight changed, you know. And then, wow. And then going, uh, going east and north, going that way, you have to you have to go up this hill, and you have to actually stop on the hill, waiting for the stoplight, which is always so very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, if you're learning how to drive, that was stick. not a fun place. Oh to. man, yeah. And if you have a stick shift, forget watch it. out. Yeah. yeah. Oh. But okay. that's all gone now, because basically yeah. what happened was the uh, uh, exactly what happened here. The valley shall be filled, and it was filled with a bridge. Everything made uh, everything crooked. It's all straight. Yep. It's turned into room and road. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna mention that because I don't. I don't really it doesn't apply. But it's fun talking about yeah. it. Here. <laughs> so the podcast for it. Kind so. of an interesting side note. I used to run that bridge, mm-hmm. you know, when cars were traveling on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, talk about timing. The light would, I'd have to let all the cars go ahead of me because mm-hmm. there's no way I was going to run on the bridge when the, when the cars were there. Mm. So as soon as I saw the light change to yellow, then I was ready to do my sprint. And then it turned to red. And then I knew all the cars in back of me would stop. Then I would sprint across the road and it would be just enough time to get across before the light turned green on it. Wow. Side. It was always challenged. Wow. But it never was ever close. But I do I know I do know when people ran with me they got very, very scared doing that. <laughs> oh, man. Now it's so beautiful. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I bet. It's, it's a great down down there. It's very beautiful. I still think they drive way too fast on Broom and Road, yeah. so be careful out there. It does I will admit that even though we have a minivan with a bullet on the top of it. Yeah. My it feels like it turns into uh, a Formula One car on oh, really? that road, you know. Oh it's my! Just, well, it's just got enough of a curve to it. It's like, oh man, this it, is, it is. It, it's to... very, it's very slick. It's... So I understand why people go fast. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel like thirty-five miles. Away. Right. Yeah. yeah, it feels more like forty-five. Okay. But I think the thirty-five was to try to keep the neighbors happy because just think, for all these years you were oh, living yeah. on a road that wasn't as traveled as much and yeah. slow speeds, and mm-hmm. now yeah, no, it's, it's just. Pretty... Like wow, I lived out in the country, you know. It's gone. You're just like yeah. going back to that house, and mm-hmm. it's no longer it's just. But actually, the house is still there, just surrounded by other houses. Okay. Oh, that the actual house. The, uh, okay. Actually, okay. is still there. Gotcha. It kind of sits, sits like a th- sore thumb though, because everything else is fancy. Looks and, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So. God, I love living in the country. It's yeah. Yeah, out, there. out there. It's great. Yeah. When we moved here, we tried to find more of a country kind of place mm-hmm. uh, so we, we kind of find found our little slice of heaven there out there by the riverside on paradise on just off of paradise just off of paradise <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it's quite enough neighborhood for us we, we yeah. like it yeah okay well i didn't know vermin row was going to come up and, yeah uh, well that's why you have a vicar <laughs> Crazy things happen, you know. It, I do run across that bridge now. I do run. Yeah. On Broomin. Yeah, yeah, on Broomin. Yeah, it's yeah. a little wide mm-hmm. enough. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will now forever think of something different now when I run across the road. I'd be thinking of this text. Yeah, well, there you go. That's. Yeah, think of John the Baptist. Yep. I'll just maybe, maybe You're I should just quote this word. This I should just be a preaching now as I go across. Yeah. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. <laughs> Yeah, so I should be saying that. If anyone's got their window down, they'll be like, what is going on with him? <laughs> Who is this guy? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I think we covered everything. I think everybody's prepared and kind of knows what's going on. Uh, Good. It's been kind of fun and be be interesting to see how close the sermon turns out to some of the thoughts we had today. Yeah. yeah. I really think it's a work in progress still. Sure. Yeah, I'm not completely sold on where I'm headed, but. Yeah. Yeah, but this cry in the wilderness is definitely there. Mm-hmm. Let the cry be heard in this wilderness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
and all of us can do it. We don't need just John the Baptist. Oh, no. no. All of us can do it. Oh, and yeah. our church can do it. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. It's all my power. I will proclaim it from the pulpit mm-hmm. and uh, from every means possible. Yeah. Even here on this podcast, the yeah. cry needs to be heard. Mm-hmm. Our Lord Jesus came to save sinners. Yes, he did. And he will come again. Mm-hmm. And I pray the Lord, he, uh, the, the world hears that loud and clear. Mm-hmm. Because salvation depends on it. Mm-hmm. Good ending. That's a all right. Sounds like the end of the sermon right there. All right. <laughs> good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a rally cry kind of Sunday, I think. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. how I feel like it is going to be like a rally cry that Christmas does not get forgotten this mm. year. And yeah. let's not forget Christmas, hmm. even if you can't come to church. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, I think that'll be good for. Good. Yeah. Well, it's been fun. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this and are ready to go for Wednesday and Sunday, depending yes. on when this gets out. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Well, <laughs> as fast as possible. That's my goal. <laughs> so, Sounds yeah. Good. Well, let's pray, and okay. um, I'll lead, and we'll high-five and call Sounds it Sounds good. All right. Um, Lord, thank you for preachers like John the Baptist to uh, prepare the way to make, make uh, level um, the places that are not. And, um, of course, that's more referring to our hearts. And thank you for um, getting our hearts ready for your coming, um, both as we celebrate Christmas, but also as we look forward to your coming again. Again, um, thank you for giving us faith, um, uh, for, for first of all, showing us that we are sinful and, and in need of a Savior, but that you've provided one in Jesus and uh, enable us to to do the good works that you've prepared for us in advance to do. Um, All this we ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey. All right. All right. In the books, the 11th episode. Hard hard to believe, huh? Yeah, I know. We hit double digits last time. Woo! Wow. uh, But, yeah, this... I I almost thought about doing something special, you know, to celebrate double digits, but... Yeah. uh, Hopefully, like, you get to triple digits. I don't think you will when I'm here, but... Hmm. um, Interesting. That'd be cool. Well, when we hit 25, we'll have to get a cake or something. Oh, that sounds Or maybe one of our ice listeners. Ice cream cake. Yeah. One of our listeners can celebrate 25. That's uh, 14 weeks from now. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to beg for oh, a cake. But... I, this is brings up something. I, I would love to have a guest come on the show with us. Yeah. That would be kind of fun. It's possible. Yeah. So okay. maybe for the 25th episode, cake and a guest. That'll be our goal. Maybe, uh, why do we have to wait that long? We might be able to find somebody else. <laughs> well, as long as they bring a cake. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, maybe we should end there. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. <laughs>